Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Welcome to Floating in Dreams. Welcome to my perfume collection for 2022. I think I've done an updated perfume collection every single year in like the past two or three years or so, so I can link those videos down below. And I thought I was due an update. I'm not someone who talks about fragrance a lot on this channel. I tend to just do the one video a year, but I thought I could update you. So let's get to my fragrance collection. Welcome if you're new here, welcome if you're a returning visitor. Thank you so very much for taking the time out of your day to click on another one of my videos. I very much appreciate you taking the time out of your day to spend some time with me here in this little corner of the internet. Like I said, it's not very often about fragrance that we're chatting about here. I mainly talk about eyeshadow palettes, I do Essence and Catrice reviews, and I like to use a lot of makeup, things shut my stashes and trying to use things up. I'm really sort of like just inserting it in my day-to-day -day life and don't, not just try a product once and then go like, oh, this, you know, whatever. Um, and I feel the same way about my fragrance collection. I spent a good couple of years really honing in on the things that I enjoy. I'm not an expert on fragrance by any means. Yes, I've got quite a few here, but I really, really don't see myself as like a fragrance enthusiast like some people in this online community that exists are. Um, I love fragrance though. I love trying things out. And now that I know what I like, um, I've really decided in the past year to sort of dig deeper into some of the categories that I enjoy. And for 2022, my goal is to just start trying some more niche brands because I've never really tried any of those. Um, so that's sort of the aim. Uh, so I'm gonna take, take you through my entire collection that I've got currently going on. At the start of the video, I'm going to talk to you about my like top four or five favorite fragrances. Then I'm gonna briefly talk you through some things that I'm gonna try or that I have testers for or that are just like new in. Then I have like my categories. So I have a very small floral category that I'll take you through. I'm not a huge fan of florals, I'm gonna tell you that. Then I've got a powdery section. Then I've got a section that I've expanded on quite a bit this year, which is my fresh, clean and fresh category. That's how I would describe them. Then I also have a section of like warm and spicy scents. And then I also have a category specifically in this video for all of my Zara H&M like clothing store brand perfume because that is a section that I definitely got into. I've got Fragrantica at the ready, so I can tell you about some notes uh, and tell you about the things that I like, etc., etc. So since we've got quite a lot here, let's get started. So I told you we were gonna start with favorites and these would count as my top four slash top five favorite fragrances of all time. I keep coming back to these. I've repurchased some of these and when they've been discontinued, I've tried finding alternatives that work for me in a similar way. So what do I have going on in here? Um, this is Jo Malone's English Oak and Hazelnut. This is something that I really, really enjoy. Um, it's sort of like, this is where my fresh and clean sort of idea comes from in one of the other sections. This fragrance definitely instigated that for me. This has a very nice sort of like clean, like fresh woodsy sort of smell to it. This smells like a walk in the forest on a wet fall day, like when, when it's just rained, it really smells like this. And this is just one that I really, really enjoy. I have the larger size and it doesn't look like I've used it a whole lot, but I feel that even though Jo Malone is like colognes, it's like eau de toilette kind of things, they I feel they last really well on me. So that's why Jo Malone's English Oak and Hazelnut is definitely one of my favorites. So it has three notes according to Fragrantica. It's hazelnut, cedar, and oak. And I think it's the cedar that gives it that freshness. And it definitely also has something that's a little bit more sweet to it to round it out, which is that nutty flavor. And I just really, really like it. This, if I don't know what to wear, this is like, like a great like everyday perfume for me. Uh, it's not like a special occasion one, like some of these other ones are. Then the second for perfume that's in my top five is Bot Flora Botanica from Balenciaga. You've heard me talking about this fragrance a lot in these fragrance videos because this is my third bottle. I use up a 30 mil, I use up a 50 mil, and now I own a 100 mil. So I've used this fragrance for years. I think it's starting to get 
like it's become discontinued, like it's getting harder to find. And this I really like again for like that easy everyday wear. It starts really fresh because I believe it has a hint of mint in the top notes, but then it dries down to something that's a little bit more earthy and woodsy. Um, so it's sort of like the more toned down version of um, Joe Malone's uh, English Oak and Hazelnut. So let me see what the fragrance notes are for this. Yeah, so I was right about the top note here. The top note is mint, then rose, carnation, cannabis, vetiver, and amber. Um, so it, it definitely dries down to something that's a lot more warm and earthy. And I think it's the cannabis that's in here that gives it that earthy vibe. And I really like that. Um, and yeah, the mint in here gives it this freshness that I really, really enjoy. But it seems to be, like I said, it seems to be going out of stock in so many places. So I'm not sure if this is still readily for sale. Uh, I bought this bottle, I think, about a year ago. And then this little guy, Love Chloe which is sadly discontinued. It's long since been discontinued. And it's one that I have been saving because I didn't want to run out of this. But as you can see, I only have a little bit left and that's because I have found other fragrances that I like as much as this, that sort of give me a similar vibe that are still available. So I now don't mind using it up and just know that I got the use out of this small 30 ml bottle that I bought to try it out at the time and then it was discontinued before I could buy a bigger size. But yeah, this, this is the powdery scent of all powdery scents it seems. And I thought last year when I filmed this video that the reason why I like this so much was because it has a pepper um, note in the accords. But I actually found that the thing that makes this very powdery and almost like lipsticky kind of smelling, like old lady lipstick, that's sort of what this gives you, like old makeup. Um, but it's the iris that this has in it. And that's why I have been trying, or at least I found another iris perf perfume or fragrance that I like equally that is a bit of an outlier. So the notes for this one are pink pepper, African orange flower, iris lilac, a uh, hyacinth, heliotrope, wisteria, powdery notes, rice, and musk. And I think it's the iris in here that I actually appreciate the most about this because I've tried other pink pepper fragrances that I like, that I really, really enjoy. I have found that I just really like pink pepper as a, as a fragrance note. Like if it has pink pepper in the top notes, I'm usually game, I have found. But it's the iris in here and the combination of the pepper and the iris that I really enjoy. So what fragrance that I find that for me replaces the Love Chloe? And it's not a woman's fragrance, it's a men's fragrance. I already showed you this last year. This is Dior Homme and this is the one that's labeled in my case original. However, I'm a little confused which Dior Homme I now actually have because I bought mine in 2020 and there are like different renditions of the same fragrance that have slightly different notes because they re-release it over time. Um, but as far as I know, what I could find when I bought this is that this is the same as the original launch from 2011. So that's the fragrance notes that I've pulled up. So this has lavender, bergamot, sage, iris, cacao, amber, leather, vetiver, and patchouli. And this gives me the same sort of lipsticky kind of vibe as the Chloe. Now this is a men's perfume, so it does develop a little bit differently on me, I feel. It starts quite leather heavy on me, and I'm not a huge fan of the instant leather, but on me, that very strong leather note is only there for like the first 20, 30 minutes I put, put it on, and then as this dries down and it develops on my skin, I get the same sort of powdery goodness that I get from the Chloe. So I would definitely think like if you find a cologne or a fragrance that you love and you can't find something, try out men's perfumes because I have found that there's quite a lot of men's fragrances that do really good things that aren't as necessarily like overly sweet and florally like some women's fragrances can be. So very often I have a couple of the other options that I found in place of the Chloe, but those all have notes that I feel don't even come make it come close to to the Chloe. This is definitely the closest to my like on my skin and how it develops and how it sits. 
that I feel gives me the same vibe, which is why I went with the bigger bottle. Lastly, in my top five, I have Mugla's Aura. This is not a perfume that I hear anybody talking about, but I was looking for something that was a little bit green, but that was warm at the same time, and I just, you can't really find it all that easily. And this is very strange when you first smell it. It's definitely not for everyone. This is a, a bit of a Marmite one. I think some people might smell this and go like, ooh, no, ooh, please no. I, I have found, however, that this is not necessarily like a da daily perfume like some of the others. This is far more like a special occasion perfume for sure for me. So the notes in here are rhubarb leaf, bergamot, green notes, orange blossom, ylang ylang, pear, bourbon vanilla, woody notes, amberwood, sandalwood, and coumarin. And on me, that vanilla note really, really comes through and I live for it. It's like, if you've ever had like, um, oh, what are they called? Like a vanilla mint? Like if you've ever had vanilla mints, like these buttery mints, that's what this smells like. And I live for it. I, I usually don't love very sweet things, but because this has the freshness of these like green notes running through it, it really brings something else to the forefront. And I feel I can, it sort of tones down the strong vanilla that this has. And I just love it for that. So Murgler's Aura is definitely one of my favorites. Now this next section are all ooh, small things that I'm dropping things. And a lot of these I bought to sort of like try things out and to see if I like it, if I like the quality or I got them free as a gift with purchase, those kind of things. So I'm gonna th go through these quickly. So I have a baby travel size of my favorite Jo Malone a uh, a English Oak and Hazelnut. Uh, this one I got with a Jo Malone pur purchase for free. I got this uh, Lancome La Vie et Belle for free with a gift as a gift with purchase. And then just recently, because I, I decided I wanted to try some more of the replica fragrances, and they did this little mini of Jazz Club as a free gift with your order. So I was like, you know, it looks really cute. I thought it was very fun. So this are just like free gifts with purchase. These are things that I did buy. Um, this is H&M's Formentera. So I was really on the hunt towards the end of last year and early this year for like really good, clean, fresh, very green fragrances. And I believe this has quite a lot of fig in it and it smells really beautiful. It just doesn't last. So that's why I've sort of, I'm, I'm sort of trying to use this up right now because I really like it. It's very sort of like quick and easy to just put on when you, once you get out of the shower. Um, but it's not necessarily my favorite fig scent. It just doesn't have any lasting power on me. So that's why that it's good. It's nice, but not my favorite. And then I have this one from Nest. It's a rollerball though. It's Cocoa Woods, which I believe has been discontinued. And I bought this mini size when I was in New York thinking, whenever I get myself to New York again, and I like this, I can buy the full size. And now they stopped doing it. But Cocoa Woods is like a unisex kind of scent. So this is also very woodsy, very earthy. And I value having this rollerball in my collection for sure. But since that is a rollerball, I don't use it that much though. And then um, the thing that I bought to get that free jazz club are these two. So I bought two mini sizes of replicas by the fireplace and jazz club as well. I really wanted to try both. I've, I've smelled both of these in stores as testers, but I just really want to make sure I spend a bit of time with these and the reason for it is because a lot of these don't come in small sizes. You only buy them in 100 ml bottles, at least where I live. The smaller sizes aren't available unless they're like this small. Very often with fragrance, I can like it initially, but I don't love it for a longer period of time to really commit to large bottles, which is why you'll see I have a lot of like 30 ml bottles and things like that. Also because I have so much, and I'd rather use things up to replace it with new things than buy really big bottles that I don't get through. Um, so yeah, I have Jazz Club and Buy the Fireplace. And I think Buy the Fireplace is my favorite of the two, but I don't know yet. Jazz Club definitely has this like bougie, like not bougie, boozy, like liquor kind of scent to it that I do appreciate. So I'm gonna try and see which ones of these I like the most. 
maybe the next time you see this video again next year, I might have actually added one or two of these replicas in the like larger size, who knows. Um, and then last but not least, I have to be very careful to not show you my address, but I just got this in. So this brand, Skins Cosmetics, is a Dutch retailer of a lot of niche fragrances, and they do this. And I didn't know this was already in. I, I had ordered this, but it could take up to two weeks for it to arrive. But they sell testers of all of these niche perfumes if you go through their website. They even give you some of these like sample cards, which is lovely. And you can buy five samples for 20 euros and you get a 10 euro discount voucher to, you know, once you've made up your mind which one you would like to get, you can put that money towards a new fragrance, which I think is a really good deal. So I've got some Byredo in here because Byredo is definitely something I want to try next, like sometime this year. Again, by the time you see this video next year, I might, might have bought one. I'm leaning Mojave Ghost, but I'm not sure yet. Um, so I, just to try them out, by Rado Bibliotheque, because I also would like to see if I can find another good leather-based perfume that isn't as like hefty as the men's perfumes that I find, because leather is very often in men's fragrances, but not so much in women's fragrances, so I want to try and see. Eleventh Hour, which sounded very appealing, appealing when I read about it on the website. Juliet has a gun, Sunny Side Up. And... Ascentic Molecules Molecule 01, because I would like to see what that molecule does on me. And then last but not least, Lilabo's Santal 33, because I do like a good sandalwood, and that's what this fragrance definitely has. And what I'll probably buy first when it comes to Byredo, um, they do these little like sets of three for a lot less than the full sizes that they sell. So I think they do one with, I think, Super Cedar and Mojave Ghost in it, so... Um, I think I'm just going to buy that sampler of three first and have three of the minis before I commit to a full size. But yeah, this way I can try some of the other fragrances that don't come into the, in the little set, I thought. And these really appeal to me. Next up, Zara. Well, most of this is Zara. Let me pull out the one that isn't Zara. So only one of the ones I was holding up is not from Zara, and it's this one. This is Phyllis from her, For Her which is from Pull and Bear, which is a Zara-related brand because this company is also owned by Inditex, um, which is the mother company of Zara, Bershka, like those kind of stores. Um, so Phyllis for her is actually touted as the best full-on, like one-on-one -on -one dupe for the Chloe Love Chloe perfume. So this is another reason why I don't really mind using up my Chloe perfume because this still exists. This indeed smells exactly the same, but I feel that it doesn't stay as long as the Chloe, and it also has a fresher note to it, I feel. It smells fresher on me than the original. The original is much warmer and much uh, more powdery on me than it is uh, in this one, but it is still definitely the same vibe. You do have to spray this a lot more though, which is why I'm happy it comes in a big bottle. And then we have... Zara. Let me let me find the instigator. Where where did you go? This one. I bought this over the summertime. Amber Fig, uh, no, Amber and Fig Cashmere from their Rain Collection. I saw this in store, smelled it, and I was like, but that's pretty. Like this is the kind of thing I wanted that H and M perfume to be, like Formentera. This does stay put on me a lot better than the H&M uh, one. That one disappears on me within like an hour. These stay for like like half a day, sometimes like a work day if you're not that busy. Like these last okay on me. They're not greatly expensive. And I have found out that the person behind a lot of these Zara fragrances is none other than Jo Malone, who I love. So at least her brand, I don't know her personally. So I really like this one and then this happened. So I did already own one Zara perfume last year. So this I got at the end of 2020. This is cardamom. Um, and this is also labeled as gender neutral. This is sort of when I was starting to look for green scents. This is one of the ones that I picked out because I thought that this could be nice. This is really nice. I do really like it more so in the springtime than any other time of the year. Uh, it is very fresh, very green, and really, really nice. And I have found that I really enjoy cardamom 
in my fragrances. So that's why this definitely had to get a spot. The TikTok hype, Red Temptation, which apparently is a dupe for Baccarat Rouge, whatever that really famous fragrance is that everybody seems to like. I was like, great, then I don't have to spend that much money on it. Ugh. This is nice, but I find it too sweet for my liking. I don't love sweet, sugary kind of scents. I don't like it if it's a sweets floral. I don't like it if it's like bakery sweets. I don't like it if it's candy sweet. I don't love anything sweet unless it's like vanilla. That, that's the only sort of sweet scent that I like. So Red Temptation, I'll probably use up this bottle at some point in time. I like it enough. But if this is what that Baccarat Rouge fragrance also smells like on me, I don't want to spend that kind of money on a fragrance because I know I won't be wearing it enough to warrant that kind of price point. So I'm glad that Zara does these like dupey kind of things. Um, and this I believe is still in stock, at least in the Netherlands it is. Because again, I was in the like light and fresh and clean stuff. I bought this over the fall time. This is one of their very standard scents that you can buy year round. This is Lightly Bloom. It currently comes in a really pretty box with like uh, these like wildflowers on it that really appealed to me. And I actually, when I bought this in store, I was there with my mom and I was like, oh, I wanted to get that perfume and I bought her one too and she really likes it too. And then I went online because I like the Amber Fig and Cashmere so much. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try some of these other Jo Malone things that they've done. So I bought these two. This is Water Lily Tea Dress, um, which apparently is a dupe for Byredo's Gypsy Water, if I'm not mistaken. So li Water Lily Tea Dress, I mean, the, the name already appealed to me. And then when I read what the fragrance notes were like, I thought that that could be a good one. So that one I enjoy. And since I like the rhubarb in the Aura perfume, I really wanted to try some more rhubarb based notes as well. I have found, however, that if it's too much rhubarb, it can smell like air freshener on me. Didn't like it. Jo Malone did a rhubarb based scent, I think at the end of 2020 or maybe early 2021, it was like a limited edition. I smelled it in store and I didn't like it at all myself. But then I found that in the Zara line, they do a rhubarb scent, Joe's Rhubarb. And this, I do like. This is like the kind of green scent. It's got some earthiness to it that I do really enjoy. And I think it's quite a unique scent for how expensive it is. Like these retail for no more than 20 euros each. I mean, Zara is on point. I just hope that from the, like the amber, and fig cashmere one is from the rain collection and i hope they redo it and that they come back out with number two because i smelled that in store as well and since i wasn't sure whether i'd like it i didn't buy both and now i kind of regret not buying the bergamot and leather spritz because that would have been a great leather based scent and actually i have found some people saying that that is a dupe for this but in the zara line it is sold as a women's fragrance and not as a men's fragrance, which is why I think the Dior one is quite unisex, actually. And then the newest things I have from Zara are Energetically New York and Universal Oud. I've only had these for a week, so I can't really tell you what these smell like. Um, I believe this line came out in the fall time. This is, again, quite fresh, quite clean, perhaps a little bit aftershavey for some people, um, the way this smells, but I really like it. And then over here, the Universal Oud. Again, I looked at the fragrance notes listed on the website and thought, I might like it. I think this was like their holiday or like winter launch. And this is Oud and I believe like patchouli or something like that, which is not my usual fare. I think it smell, makes me smell too much like an old lady. But because this is a little lighter, like all of these Zara fragrances aren't too intense. I feel it works quite well on me, so that's why I do like these. So I'm definitely, I definitely think Zara is one to sort of keep an eye out for if you like your fragrances to not be too expensive, but you do want things that smell a bit more unique. The next category we need to tackle is florals, and florals is not something that I love anymore. I thought I did, but I don't, so a lot of these I bought years ago. 
Um, and actually, those are the ones that I have been using up mainly. So Dolce by Dolce & Gabbana is definitely one that this spring I want to commit to using up because it's just not my favorite anymore and not something I love. And then we have Stella McCartney's Stella, the only floral that I still truly, truly love and adore. Um, this is a rose-based scent, and I don't love rose normally, but this... For some reason, it works really well. Um, it was reformulated, I believe, and it no longer really has um, like the staying power it used to have, apparently. And then finally, from Jo Malone, I have one of her Cologne Intense, and this is Dark Amber and Ginger Lily. And this still has that earthy sort of floral vibe to it, but I bought this to layer under English Oak and Hazelnut if I want to make that more special and give it more depth, I use this underneath it. Then we move into my powdery category. And here, I've only bought one thing really, because that was like one of the things that I wanted to own because of me loving the Chloe one so much. But one that I've had for years, I used to own this as a 30 ml bottle, but that I used pretty much up. And so I, I was gifted this, I think. This was a 50 ml bottle that I was gifted. So I haven't used it as much because I like the other one so much better, but this is the original Chloe perfume. And this is nice. It's also quite powdery. And I think it's a good sort of like, if you're looking for a powdery scent, it's pretty good. I just don't think it's as nice as the love. Um, and I think it's also quite floral. So this has uh, peony, lychee, freesia, rose, lily of the valley, magnolia, virginia, cedar, and amber. So this is probably another one of those where I'm like, I like this, but I don't love it as much as I do other fragrances right now. This may be actually one that I just need to pass to my mom because it's still pretty much full and I know she likes it because I remember, I think I gifted her another like small bottle and she loved it. So then one of my favorite powdery scents actually that if I want to go full on powder is Nirvana French Grey by Elizabeth and James. Uh, this is a very powdery fragrance and I really, really like this. I was very happy to have found this one and that I like it so much. So this is Neroli, Lavender and Musk. So it's very, very sort of simple, you could say. And this is just, I don't know, if I really want that very soft, like cashmere kind of scent, that's the way I would describe it, then I wear this. It's more definitely like a winter scent for me though. I don't, I can't wear this year round. And then the only Chanel perfume in my entire collection is Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel, which I have in the small bottle. I wanted to try a Chanel fragrance at the time, um, and I tried a couple, and this was the only one that really stood out to me as something that I'd like. Um, this, when I wear this, I don't know what happens to it, but I get a lot of compliments when I wear this. So this is definitely one that I like to wear more so on occasions. I don't tend to wear this to work, but this has orange, mandarin orange, bergamot, Orange Blossom, Turkish Rose, ja Jasmine, Mimosa, Elang Elang, Patchouli, White Musk, Vanilla, Vetiver, Tonka Bean, and Opopo, Opopo Nex, whatever that is. But yeah, this has a freshness to it that I really appreciate. And when I, when I wear this, it, it just really sort of makes me feel a little bit more classy, you could say. I don't know, maybe it's because it's Chanel, I don't know. But I do really like that, but I think it's a fragrance that so many people have that it doesn't really stand out. And finally, in my powdery category, I have Zadig and Voltaire's This Is Her. So this is one that actually came onto my radar because it has pink pepper. So this is one of the pink pepper scents that I went to the store to try to see if it could replace or be the replacement for my Chloe perfume. I ended up deciding not to and I ended up going for the Dior instead. Um, but this one, I, it, I couldn't get it out of my head um, because it does bring something else to the table. So this has pink pepper, silkwood blossom, jasmine sandback, I'm not sure what that is, uh, whipped cream, vanilla, chestnut, sandalwood, and cashmere wood. And I think it's the whipped cream in this that makes it so addictive to me. Like it definitely has this very creamy, milky sort of scent to it. I can't really describe it, like really soft again. However, the jasmine in this makes it quite sharp. 
So I have found with uh, a very sharp jasmine note that they can really sort of pull very sharp out of the entire fragrance on my skin. So this is one where I sort of have to get used to it because I can really, really smell like the jasmine kind of cuts through everything, which is why this is not a replacement for the Chloe for me because I feel it stays soft, whereas this is a little bit sharper. Um, but this to me is very much on par with the Coco Mademoiselle for like an occasion kind of scent. This is really lovely, which is why I went with a small bottle. Next up, we have some warm and spicy scents. So let me talk you through these. So before we get to the main fair, I do have two small things here that I just want to give a mention. Uh, things that I'm not 100% sure about just yet. And one of them is an H&M perfume, and this is Black Papyrus. And I'm not sure if they still do this, but I picked this up in their winter sale last year. And this smells nice. I believe it's got quite a lot of oud in it, a little bit of leather perhaps as well. Like, Black Papyrus is definitely the way I would describe this. Um, it's just not something I've worn a lot just yet, so that's why I feel kind of undecided about this one. And another thing I feel quite undecided about is this. This is uh, Twilly O Ginger by Hermes. Um, this I got as a free gift with purchase uh, because I bought some other Hermes fragrances that you haven't seen yet because they're coming up in these two categories that I still have left. And this, I like it. I like the scent of it. I've worn it once or twice. But it's more like leaning candy ginger to me, so it's got quite a lot of sweetness to it. So I'm not sure if I'm a big enough fan to really commit to the full size, but I appreciate having the small size. So I mentioned Hermes, so I'll talk to you about this then. This is Twilly's Eau Poivre by Hermes. And I, again, bought this because the Poivre in the name, the pepper, is definitely also in here. So one of the top notes in here is pink pepper, then it's got rose and it's got patchouli. And I like looking at this, I think it looks really, really cute. Um, but this, it smells so, so good. But to me, because it's got the patchouli and the rose, it doesn't pull very powdery. It pulls more sweet on me. So this is why I like to think of this as a warm, spicy scent like something really nice for the winter time, but it's still, well, should I call it simple? Let's call it simple enough for it to not be overpowering. Very often these very gourmand kind of scents, I find them quite overwhelming because they just do too much. Uh, but this one I feel keeps it nice and basic and I can really definitely smell all three of those elements in this one and I really appreciate that. Next up, one that I've had for quite some time, um, like the French Grey, I think I bought these together, uh, but very for a very long time, my favorite sort of uh, sweet vanilla kind of scent that I had was Bourbon from the Nirvana line by Elizabeth James. And this, I remember like testing this on my skin and I was like, Oh, so this, I think Jazz Club, but from the replica line is going to be sort of like the updated version of for me because I feel that this isn't just like bourbon vanilla, which is one of the notes in it, but on me, when I spray this on, I definitely can also sort of smell like a liquor kind of scent to it. Maybe it's the oak in here. I'm not sure because it's got oak, bourbon, vanilla, and tube rose. Those are the three things that it has. And on me, it just has this like freshness to it that makes it smell quite boozy. So I, again, I like this a lot, not for every day for sure. And then a fragrance that I really didn't think I was going to like. I had never heard of this. I'd never even looked into Guerlain as a fragrance brand. But then I saw a lot of people raving about this in their perfume collections. And so many people had it and I had a gift voucher and I was like, I'm going to blind buy this and see if I like it. And then when I actually smelled it, I was like, oh, and now that I like when I looked up the notes, I was like, now I know why I like it. This has lavender, bergamot, iris, jasmine selback, rose, Tahitian vanilla, coumarin, Australian sandalwood, licorice, benzoin and patchouli. So I think, again, that iris note in here is what I enjoy so much, together with the vanilla. So for me, this is definitely like a warm and spicy kind of thing. It doesn't have as much spice. I'd like it to be spicier, 
which is why I have one more coming up. Uh, but this definitely has that warmth and that coziness that I really appreciate in a lot of my fragrances. So that's why Guerlain's Mont Garlin is definitely one that I really enjoy. And finally, the pick for something that was more warm and spicy, I again went the unconventional route because I bought another men's perfume. This is Sauvage Elixir by Dior. So this is another men's fragrance. I was again looking for like what men's fragrances could be worn by women and what was like a good, good alternative. And then I, for some reason, came into like little testers that I could select when I was buying makeup online. And I tried every single rendition of this fragrance and the Elixir, which was launched at the end of 2021, was the one that stood out to me the most when I put it on myself and I had a gift card. So I was like, I'll buy this. The top notes in this are grapefruit, cinnamon, nutmeg, and cardamom. Remember that I said why I like that, gar that Zara cardamom fragrance so much. It's got a lot of that in here as well. The heart notes are lavender which is another one I like. And then in the base, it's got amber, licorice, vetiver, patchouli, and sandalwood. So it's got a lot of things that I like. So this, yes, it smells a bit aftershavey at first. Like the opening of this on me, like the Dior Homme where you get a lot of leather in this, there's also something I'm like, eh. I don't know. It's It smells a bit manly at first. Once it dries down and it really develops, in this really nice warm hug. That's what I get from this, a warm hug. And that's why I went with this one because it has more of those spices in it. And I really wanted to have something spicy that wasn't too sweet. And this definitely has that. And finally, the last part of this video is going to be about my fresh, clean and fresh scents because this is the part of my collection that I think I've expanded the most. Is that true? Yeah, there's three new things here that I didn't own yet, la yet last year. So I have uh, these two here. So I've got Replica's Beach Walk. I fell out of love with now that I've used it quite a bit. So I ended up using, let me show you how much I've used of it. Like I've used about half of it and I like it, but Jo Malone's Wood Sage and Sea Salt is by far, like just works better on me. I like the saltiness that this has. I just do. So this has sea salt, sage, grapefruit, umbrette, uh, and seaweed. So those are the fragrance notes in the Jo Malone. So another one, and then the beach walk one does have pink pepper, so I do like that, and the bergamot that I like as well. Then it's got lemon, um, but then the middle notes, coconut milk, ylang ylang, heliotrope, musk, benzoin, and cedar. And I think it's the coconut milk in here that I don't like. It just pulls weirdly sweet on me and I don't love it. Some more Jo Malone's then, uh, and these I kind of bought in tandem to layer together or to wear by themselves. So this is Caden Cedarwood, which was a limited edition collection. Maybe if I hold it up here, you can see that the bottle is really, really pretty with like the little like herbal design on it. And then I have Fig and Lotus Flower. And this is the fig scent that I ended up loving the most. So I don't need anything else that's like figs. Um, and these layer really nicely. So this is pretty green and fresh. It's like very earthy, herbally, and they really complement each other really, really nicely. So then something that I already owned in last year's video is Bleu de Chanel from Chanel. So again, perhaps I like men's fragrances for Chanel a little bit better than I do their women's fragrances. This has grapefruit, lemon, mint, pink pepper, ginger, nutmeg, jasmine, iso e super, incense, vetiver, cedar, sandalwood, patchouli, labdanum, and white musk. So this has a lot of notes that I love. It's just, it starts very citrusy and I don't have a lot of like citrus scents because a lot of citrus fragrances on me end up smelling like air freshener. Uh, and I don't love that, but this on me works really well. And this again, I tried as a tester first. I very randomly picked it up and then I had to make a selection of like what perfume minis I was gonna take on a trip. And I brought that and I was like, nobody cares because I'm gonna be in a completely different city in a different country. So nobody cares if I smell like a man. So this was actually the first men's fragrance that I tried. And I was like, oh wait, but I can, I can actually get away with this. So this is really, really lovely. It's very easy to wear. Like I think a lot of guys actually smell like this. 
I mean, this is, I think, this and Sauvage are like two of the most purchased men's fragrances, I believe, but I love them. So maybe if you're married or you have a husband or a boyfriend or whatever, like buy them this for their birthday or Christmas and then you can wear it too. And then we get to the final three fragrances which are all quite new to me. So I mentioned I wanted something that was green and fun and a little bit different from what I usually go for. So I decided to try a small bottle of Gucci's Bloom Aqua di Fiore and I did smell this in store and wasn't blown away with it by it but then I tried it again uh, once I got it home and I was like, oh yeah, I do like it. So this has um, a galbadum leaf, I don't know what that is, Cassis bergamot lemon, honeysuckle tube rose, jasmine, lily of the valley, freesia, musk, iso e super, and sandalwood. And in the end, because my main gripe with it was that it didn't seem to last very long, but I think I was just, because it was out and about, I think I didn't really spray it on very well when I tried it in store. This, in the end, I really, really ended up liking it. I don't think it's going to be like my favorite green scent at all because it is quite florally, but I did really like it. However, I like the outer box better than I do the bottle. So I did keep the box with this one, which I don't do for most of my perfumes. And then the other Aramis fragrance that I wanted to try was again, something that was going to be a little bit fresh a little bit spicy at the same time. And I went with uh, Un Jardin sur le, le Nil. So that means a garden along the Nile. Um, so this has grapefruit, green mango, tomato, carrot, bulrush, lotus, orange, hyacinth, peony, musk, iris, incense, lobdamum, and cinnamon. And this, especially that green mango that's in here, gives it this little like freshness yet spiciness at the same time. It is just very different from other things that I have. And it, it's almost like, like if, like I've never been to the Nile, so I don't know what it smells like there, but I can imagine this definitely reminding me of like walking along water. It has something very aquatic to it. And that's another thing that I'm gonna be looking for this year is like fresh, but aquatic, like something that smells like water. That's, that's something I'm still looking for. I don't know if it's on the market. And then finally, the last fragrance I wanna show you, and I think the best fresh green scent I have found is Guerlain's uh, Aqua Allegoria Herba Fresca. That's with lemon, clover, mint, green tea, lily of the valley, and cyclamen, uh, which is like a floral note. This, I don't know, this this just smells really nice. And these Guerlain fragrances just have the prettiest bottles. I really, really like it. Um, so this is, again, I need to wear something just more often. I've only gotten this like in the past couple of months. And as you can see, I've gotten quite a few new things, especially with all of that Zara stuff. Um, so I definitely need to try this a bit more, but I felt that this was better in like the springtime than in the fall time when I bought this. So those were all of the fragrances that I would like to show you in today's video. I definitely think that that new YSL Illicit Green fragrance that has just come out, that I might like that. So that's definitely perhaps going to be like one of the first purchases of 2022. However, I've got enough. So I definitely need to like get stuck in and try some of these things a bit more. Um, I tend to buy a lot of fragrances towards the end of the year because that's when I get a lot of gift vouchers in and lots of dis discounts because I tend to buy things a lot on sale. Um, I definitely don't pay full price for all of these things in case you were wondering. Um, so yeah, and I definitely want to keep an eye out on Zara because they do some stunning, stunning things. So yeah, if you have any tips for me on like fragrances that I can try that you think I might like based on what I've shown you today, also, is, is is there an interest in me doing more videos about fragrances like going more in depth or doing things like that like let me know in a comment down below if you want me to do more fragrance related videos because i think i can i'm not an expert but maybe i can like dig a little bit more deeply into my fragrance collection because i have a lot as you can see and i really really enjoy it um so maybe i can do it a bit more often than just the once a year kind of thing who knows? So thank you very much for watching today's video, everybody. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week, and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.